We just heard the Shema, Shema. It is to the Jews what the sign of the cross is to us. We enter the church, cross ourselves. We leave. We do it with every prayer. Some people say, mercy, 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 and make the sign of the cross. Just, it's just part of our culture. And the Shema for the Jew, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Uh, in the Bible, in Exodus, it says, you should write this on your wrist, on a band on your wrist, on your forehead, put it over the door, put it over the entrance of the gate. They were supposed to say it at least minimally two times a day, but the Shema was something Jews said all the time. They were always saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. So it's no surprise, there it is in our scriptures. Um, but it's also interesting to see what happens with it today. First of all, there are two basic sources for the New Testament uh, Gospels, uh, the Synoptic Gospels, the Synoptic, which means the same, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is a story all of its own, way late. Mark, even though it's in the Bible as the second one, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Mark is believed to be the earliest source for a bunch of reasons. So Mark is one set of material, and then there's another source, and source in German is quell, and, and the first letter of quell is Q, so they call it the Q source. There's the Markin source and the Q source. And the reason we know that is that Mark has this body of material. Much of it is in Matthew and Luke, but there's a whole piece of material that's not in Mark but is common to Luke and Matthew. So they say there's another source out there that they drew material from that Mark wasn't aware of. And then there's a little bit of material that's only in Matthew, not in Mark, and only in Luke, not in Mark, but it's separate just to Matthew and Luke. And where they got that, I'm not sure. I don't remember that in my courses, okay? But there's bas basically Mark and Q, the quell source. Now, Mark wrote first. Today we're hearing Matthew. But if we go to the Mark source, the earlier source, this basic reflection of the Shema comes up, but it's in a conversation between a scribe and between Jesus. And between these two, a conversation takes place, and in Mark, the scribe or Pharisee says, what's the most important commandment? Now, tell me, how many commandments are there, everyone? No, there's 613. There are 613 commandments to the Jews. All of them would be considered, they're all important. What's the most important? They're all important. You do them all. Why, and this is homework for you, you get out your browser today and put in their Ten Commandments and find out, because again, another little piece that escaped me and I didn't go bother to check it out, why this Ten? I know they were given on Mount Sinai, but for most of us, we put all the attention on the Ten Commandments as if this is what God commands. He commanded 613 laws. And you heard in the first reading how serious he was. He says, you better treat your people with compassion and respect and love, and if you don't, I'll, you say, if you mistreat orphans and widows, God says, then I'll kill all you men. And then I'll make your wives um, uh, widows and your children orphans. There. You ready for it? That's our compassionate, loving God. I'll kill you all. That's what it says. So uh, God is pretty serious in these 613 laws. I understood yesterday in my reading that um, 365 are you shall not, and whatever the remaining is, 268 or whatever, are you shalls. And the you shalls uh, connect with the 268 bones in the body. This is what the Jews say, you know. So every bone in your body and every day of the year is reflected in that law and your response to God. Very serious. So the scribe says, Jesus, which is the most important of all the commandments? By the way, Jesus, this is a test. I suppose he should have said all of them. But he gave a response. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. The Shema. That should be no surprise. But then he added to it. He was only asked for one, and he gave two. That's what the Scripture says, but really three, because he said, then you shall love your neighbor. How? As you love yourself. So you are to love self, neighbor, and God. I think in that order, too. 
If you don't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor? And if you're not loving your neighbor, how can you say you love God? It's like somebody saying to you, I love you so much, can't stand your children, but I love you. Most of you say, well, then get out. No, but I love you. I just hate your children. Whoa. So it's clear what God is asking, and Jesus presents that as the end, the most important. In the Markan piece, in the Markan gospel, the scribe or Pharisee is so impressed with Jesus' reflection. Not only the Shema, he, he was able to select out the most important thing, love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. But he added to it, he connected, he said, and the second is like it, love your neighbors yourself, which again is, comes from Leviticus. And he was connecting these as it's essential to both love God and love neighbor. How can you say you love, as the gospel says, how can you say you love your neighbor who, whom you can see if you... How can you say you love God whom you can't see if you don't love your neighbor whom you can see? It's clear what Jesus is asking and what certainly the Old Testament asks too. Now, when it comes to Matthew, he changes the text. He doesn't have a conversation take place except for the question, what's the most important command? And he answers the same, the Shema, love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says, not the scribe or Pharisee, he says, this is worth more than any burnt offering or sacrifice. No, he says, this, is, uh, this sums up the whole law and all the prophets. Why Matthew changes it, I'm not sure, but it would appear to me that this authoritative Jesus in Matthew and this gospel is directed precisely, specifically to the Jews. That was the audience. Jesus is the one with the answer, the fullness of the answer, and he states it simply. They didn't need any further explanation. They could see what that meant. Jesus said it all, not the scribe or Pharisee. In Luke, basically gives the Shema, but then you'll remember at the end, he says, love your neighbor as yourself, and so the Pharisee says, well then, who is my neighbor? In order to justify himself, and then we get that good Samaritan reading where he explains neighbor. So that's the presentation of the same passage in three different ways. But that's not the big issue here. Oh, it is. I mean, that's beautiful. But the real gem here stuck in this scripture today is that Jesus actually changed the scriptures. This is stunning. To state the Shema, which was to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, if you changed any of those words, a good Jew would catch that in an instant. He said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength. All your mind. Why your mind? You know, nothing worse than a good Christian who doesn't have a mind. Oh, they can be rule followers, uh, blind rule followers. I know a nun, well, I don't know the nun, but I know the nun that she said this to. She was in her novitiate learning to be a sister and learning the rules of the community. And to teach obedience, this is what the head sister said. Go plant the tree, the, this little tree outside, upside down. She said, excuse me, sister? She said, yes, go take this little tree and go plant it upside down. She said, why, sister? That doesn't make sense. But I told you to do it question of obedience. That's what you call stupid obedience, blind obedience. Plant it upside down. If that's the way you teach obedience, and if obedience means it, it doesn't have to make any sense, now I understand in the military it's different. It's life and death, and a whole platoon can depend on you and, the, and, and following orders. So somebody has to be responsible for the, for the group. And so in the military, you obey no matter what. I guess that makes sense. It's very serious stuff, this life and death issue. But Jesus engaged the mind. And he says, in effect, a real person of faith is someone who thinks their faith and knows their faith and sees with their mind and understands and can make a decision sometimes to do other than the, what the law says because they see a need. And what would normally demand a change in the law? What do you think would be the, the need out there? Uh, if this is what I'm supposed to do, do and I see something happen, what would be the thing that would probably most call me 
perhaps even to break the law for the good of another. Yeah, but what would, what would be, where would that be coming from in us? Why would we do it? Out of, out of love. Out of love. And Jesus proved this again and again. That's why he healed on the Sabbath. That's why he broke the law regularly on the Sabbath to do good, to do compassion, to do love. And so Jesus says, the most important command is the Shema. They all knew that. Love God with all your heart, but he said with all your mind. Think it through. Know what you do. Know why. Understand. Do all that you do with understanding and thinking, with real knowledge, God knowledge, connected to God, to wisdom. Think it through. Own it. Make it your own. When I listen to the gospel, it is clear to me that Jesus emphasizes, just like in that first reading, compassion and love. Compassion and love. It practically orders all that he does. He walks through a town and the sick and the, and the, and the distressed come to him. And so many times it says he was exhausted he finished a whole day of healing and curing and preaching. He was exhausted. He went off to have a little bit of time to pray and to be at peace. He rounded the corner, and there's another crowd. So what did he do? Get out of here. I have to pray. No. Filled with compassion, filled with love, he tended to their needs. The gospel says, like, like sheep without a shepherd. And when the shepherd came, he took care of his sheep. Why this is so important to us is because as everything that Jesus teaches, although this is a narrative about something over 2,000 years ago, this is our narrative. This is our book. These are the teachings and the example of Jesus. For Jesus to lift out of 613 laws the command, love God with all your heart and to change it and all your mind and all your strength. Do that. But... Also, love your neighbors yourself. In other words, if you say you love this God whom you can't see, but you don't love your neighbor whom you can't see, what kind of love is that? It's empty. It's empty. So today, we are given the old great Jewish Shema to love God with everything that we have, most of all our mind. But connected to that, tied to that at the core and at the center is a compassion and love that goes out to everyone that transforms our way of thinking, transforms our heart, transforms our life and our faith, so that out of that, we find the energy of Christ dwelling within us. We become Christ-centered people, disciples of the Lord. We walk in His ways. We speak His words. We do His things.